Okay, let's do a bonus video on adding highlights that shine. I know you've all been wondering about that and there's been a lot of discussion this month on how to make that citrus fruit look juicy and shiny. So we're going to talk about how I approach this. What I do is I start to look at other people's images and how they've drawn and painted citrus. So I always do a Google search and see what I can find. And as you can see here, I found some awesome artwork. Actually, does this artwork look familiar to any of you? Actually, that's the new gallery page we've just put up of your work, by the way. So I go and I look at other artists' work that I like. And I've had this book for many years. It's the complete book of fruits and vegetables. And the illustrator is an Italian woman by the name of Marilina Pistoia. Her work is exquisite, as you can see here, the way she does the peels, the way she does the shine. And then I look at other books I like, and this is another favorite of mine. And I put this in here to inspire you because really what they do this, you know, in this book is they've drawn the citrus beautifully and then adding other elements too, and it's just fun. I also look at old paintings, usually from the Flemish Dutch painters because they were the masters of doing still life and getting things shiny. And here's another contemporary botanical artist that did a good job on her pal. But no better than you guys, got to say. And then here's some photorealism painting. So I just kind of look at everything I can find first to help me get started. Then I do my own analysis. And what I did was I took a photograph of the subject I wanted to draw here. And then I converted it to grayscale so I could just focus in on the tones. And I made myself a tone bar. You can see it at the very top here based on the tones within the photo. And this is how I did it. So I took a photo, converted it to grayscale, and then I analyzed the tones. And what I found was that the highlight was, yes, the lightest of the paper, but that the tone next to the highlight was actually a number five tone, which was really interesting. And then the, the sec, so I analyzed all the different tones, and then I did the same thing. I matched in Photoshop just to see what the colors would have looked like. And then I zoomed in and did a highlight I, I, on the highlight, I zoomed in really close and I saw that that highlight was not solid. It actually shimmered a bit the way I normally do a highlight. So I thought about that and here you can see at the bottom I did a little bit of drawing based on that analysis. And I was pretty pleased with it. First I tried embossing, I tried adding paint and I realized in the end all I really needed to do was just carefully leave a highlight use the tones the way I saw them in terms of the highlight was tone one, next to it was tone five, and so on. Then I went back in and made my highlight shimmer and made it subtle so that it wasn't even everywhere. And I was pretty pleased with it. So I would like to just encourage you all to do that same kind of analysis. And then when you're ready, perhaps you would like to think about at some other time drawing the citrus with leaves and stems and possibly a flower, which some of you have done. It's just something to sort of build on all the skills we're doing each month. And then look at your work here. I have to say, you guys, it was Vern and I are, were so impressed with the beauty of the work and the commitment and the creativity in trying so many different things. So let's just give you guys all a round of applause now. And now we'll talk about your work some more.